where we're at right now with this technology is we've gone from demonstrating the effectiveness of windrow burning um, to now hopefully this summer we'll be getting one of these harvest weed seed destruction devices to uh, install in our commercial combine up at our research farm. We believe in the case of pigweed, barnyard grass and rice, ryegrass obviously and wheat, this is a main way that we spread weed seed around. This is a main way that we replenish the soil seed bank with weed seeds. So if we can go in there with something a farmer's doing anyways with a combine, destroy the weed seed as he goes through the field, we can greatly reduce that soil seed bank or that overall population of weed seed that we are um, dealing with, making weed control easier for one thing in year one, but also preventing weeds from spreading from field to field in the combine. Right now, uh, my understanding is both Case and John Deere have, are working with this, uh, this company that uh, took that Harrington seed destructor, that drag behind big clunky piece of equipment. They condensed it, made it smaller, and put it up under the combine. It, it does rob some of the horsepower from the combine, so it will slow it down. It, it really works on a, on a bigger model combine that can spare a little bit of horsepower, um, but you won't even know you're doing it when you drive through the field. It'll just be uh, chopping up the weed seed as you go. It's really based on it both both a grinding, and but also the, the, it spins it around really fast and you get that impact of that seed. Uh, against the wall of that of that milling machine, if you will, and it just basically destroys the cellular integrity of the seed and it won't germinate. So it greatly reduces the viability of weed seed. We really believe that um, our data that we've done using the windrow burning so far, we have shown that we can significantly re reduce weed seed population. So we know that it, this concept will definitely work. And, uh, you know, we, we don't have all the answers yet to how, how the long-term impact of this. Um, I can tell you kind of a funny story. They, they've been using harvest weed seed destruction in Australia now for about 10 years uh, or more on, uh, on ryegrass control. Um, and this falls in the category of we only get to manage weeds for a while, we never win. But weeds have actually developed resistance to harvest weed seed destruction. So automatically people start thinking, well, they make seed that are just so hard they won't destroy it. And that's not the case at all. They've actually just selected for ryegrass um, that shatters prior to going through the combine. So they've, they've selected for earlier maturing ryegrass. So we can only hope to contain them. I don't think we can ever hope to win, but this would definitely be a step in the right direction. Um, it's non-chemical method of weed control which would greatly help us in reducing our problems problems with herbicide resistance because we wouldn't be putting a, a herbicide pressure on the weed we'd be putting a mechanical pressure on it if it reduced just one herbicide application across 5,000 acres at 10 to 15 dollars an acre for that herbicide it's not going to take very long to pay for that piece of equipment and again, it's hard to put a value on, you know, the resistance management aspect of, of having a weed control method, a very effective weed control method, you know, is not only non-chemical, but also will help prevent the further spread of some of these weeds. I fully believe that if we had had harvest weed seed destruction back in the mid-2000s, we would not have seen the rapid expansion of glyphosate-resistant pigweed like we did.